Hi guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this video. I am Jay Theo and I hope you're feeling well, hope you're doing okay. So today I wanted to talk about a topic that I feel like is not discussed enough within the black community. As a gay black man, I find pride in all three of those identities. And I feel like there's a common epidemic of self-hatred when it comes to the black identity. And due to the layers of patriarchy, misogyny, capitalism, homophobia, all of the isms and phobias within our community, black men sadly are often the biggest victims. And throw the layer of bisexuality or gay on top of that, if you created a monster or reasoning of why one would want to escape his own skin. Men by society expectations are not allowed to be human and sadly have to be living contradictions of emotionless but strong, courageous protectors and providers. And black men who at the core were never humanized as much as their white counterparts often lack the emotional societal support to humanize themselves. When you don't even see yourself as human, how could you even begin the process of even loving yourself? Black men still to this day are still seen to be criminals, delinquents, intelligent, beast-like in the eyes of mainstream society. Every single black man I know can recall a time where they're walking down the street behind a white woman and she clutches her, her bag, or if they're in an elevator with a white woman, she clutches her items, or the, or the times that you're on a subway train or a bus and people rather stand and sit next to you. Or the constant fear, no matter how educated you are, how successful you become, how respectable you are, being in the wrong place at the wrong time could still lead to your untimely death or arrest. We Real Cool Black Men and Masculinity by Bell Hooks does a phenomenal breakdown of the black male journey in America and the societal chaos that affects us. It's actually a huge catalyst for me making this video. Another huge catalyst for me making this video was my own experiences as a gay black man and my own journey to loving myself. When I was younger, I found it very difficult to love the skin that I was in. As one of the two darkest siblings within my family, I always wanted to be lighter, and my mom doesn't even know this, but I used to pray when I was really little that my skin would get lighter. Also, when I was younger, I hated my hair. I was so jealous of my mixed cousins who are black and Mexican and their loose curl pattern. When I finally did start loving my hair, I was around like 12 years old and I started growing my hair out because I wanted to get braids because I was the trend at the time. Had this cute little soft afro. I was growing out for like six months. And one day I'm sitting at home and my dad calls me into the bathroom. He pulls out his clippers, tells me no son of mine is gonna have braids and y'all just cuts all my hair off. I'm crying, I'm upset. Of course he tells me not to cry and that I should stop crying. But y'all, after that traumatic moment, you reset my hate for my hair and I never let my dad ever touch my hair again. I was also one of those kids that avoided the sun like the plague. I did not want to get darker. I hated any time I got darker from playing in the sun. And of course, in my black family, there was always jokes about looking burnt or being too dark or looking crisp. So obviously, it just embedded in me the colorism that I really, really had to fight against for myself. Layering on being gay was another factor of self-hate for me. When I was really young, getting beat by my dad for wanting to play with dolls or for wanting the girls who were at McDonald's really, really made me hate being a boy. I had to be about four or five one time when I told my mom I wanted to be a girl and she lost it. At the end of the day, all it was is that I just wanted to be able to play with girl toys and things that girls liked because that's just the stuff that I liked at that age. When I did finally come to terms with the fact that I did like boys around 12 to 13, I used to cry myself to sleep so many nights wishing that I was not gay. I would have nightmares from thinking that I'm going to hell and I would cry and cry and cry to pray the gay away. Eventually when I came out, it created even more ups and downs between me um, and my mom and that became an emotional roller, co roller coaster, especially because my mom was one of my biggest emotional supports for me and we had such a close relationship that added another layer of self hate to me. But my mom has came around, my mom still is my biggest supporter so this is no hate towards my mom, but at the time it just further induced me just not liking being a boy, not liking who I was, me hating on the fact that I'm black, just feeling like, dang, there's just so many things I have to deal with. But this further induced my determination to get out of my hometown. I became valedictorian of high school. I got a full attention scholarship to college. So those things reset my confidence and love for myself. Even still, I hated aspects of my blackness. I still never fully felt as black as other men because I wasn't super hyper masculine. I wasn't always the biggest fan of like rap music and things like that. You know, I was, I liked pop. I liked anime. I liked reading books. I liked all all those kind of things so I still always kind of felt like to my core to myself that I wasn't as black as some other black men and when I entered college I did go through this phase where I kind of wanted to reinvent myself right before I left for my freshman year I got an S curl and curled my hair y'all and yes there's pictures 
Here our pictures, y'all. And, and people thought I was mixed, and I used to eat it up. People were like, oh, are you black and Mexican? Are you mixed? And I would be like, no, I'm full black. But I just ate up that attention because I, that, that still was a showcase of how much I still didn't truly love my full blackness. Luckily for me, eventually being natural became a craze when I was in college, when all the girls would start going natural and all the big chops. So even myself, I was like, I'm not gonna keep putting an S curl in my hair that's damaging my hair. And then I grew out my hair and I started wearing my hair on a high top fade and an afro. I started doing the, the spun. And sometimes I would just do a wash and go and, and wear my hair and do my natural curl. So that was the first phase of me really starting to appreciate my blackness and love, started loving my natural hair and just letting my hair grow out my head and leave it alone and not always trying to wear a, a super low cut. It, just because I didn't like my hair. College overall was truly the birthplace of my love for blackness. Even though I went to the Ohio State University, which was a PWI, we had such a large student population. I think we were number one or another two in America at the time. So the black population was massive. It pretty much mirrored any large HBCU. Seeing all the educated black students on campus coming from all these different high schools and just seeing the camaraderie, the divine knot, everything was just such an embrace of blackness. I had so many black friends. I went through the bridge program, which was a program that was just for black and brown minority students to get acclimated to school. I was a moral scholar, which was a diversity scholar. So I was always just so immersed with all the black students that my love for blackness just kept growing and growing and growing. And also it was my first time seeing so many black male scholars together, like my, my, my fellow scholar recipients, other men, people I'm meeting in the engineering departments, the people that are going the pre-med routes. So if I started meeting so many black men that were scholars and like to read and like to be educated so that I I also started seeing black men in a new light that created more appreciation and self-love for myself. I also started meeting other gay black men that also had a love for black men and a love for themselves. They were, I started learning more about the ballroom scene, how some people, some of them in Columbus were a part of the ballroom scene there. I started going out in Columbus, going to the gay spots that were fully black. And it just was just a, such an immersive experience when I went to college. Also seeing and being a part of me and my black peers fighting against racism, standing our ground for things on campus. It was just a phenomenal experience and it really really grew my love for my blackness. As I always mentioned, therapy was such a big key in me continuing to love myself and growing to love myself. Especially when I had therapists that worked hard to understand the black experience. My first time ever going to therapy was in college and my first therapist was a white gay man and y'all he was amazing. But he was the first one to be like you know I really think that you should have a therapist that is black or brown that can relate more to the minority experience. But I have a group therapy session that I host weekly with um, black and brown men of color that um, that are going through similar things that I host so that you guys can share stories, connections, and relate to one another. So I signed up for his group counseling. I did that. And, and also I ended up getting a, a black woman therapist who really helped me break down being a first generation black student on campus. She really was the first one to help me break down my issues with my father. It was amazing. She helped me kind of walk through the process of being gay out um, in a new city and just embracing it. Like dealing with the stress of being a new a first generation college student, not understanding the dynamics. It, it was amazing experience having a black therapist, but then going to group counseling and being around all these black and brown individuals going through similar things on campus. Like that really, really helped me grow my love for myself. And it really was a dynamic experience and also helped grow my love for therapy and group counseling. Also, when I lived in New York, did group counseling with a group of black men that were all in their 20s and, th and early 30s. And that was also amazing for me. So I am a huge advocate for group counseling. And I think that's also another great way to build love for yourself, to be around like-minded people, to be upon people that look like you, where you can share stories and not be judged, and you can have this shared understanding for each other. Another huge key and extremely fundamental to my love for myself was my mother. Yes, we had ups and downs when I came out because she didn't understand it and everything, but Overall, my mom has been such an emotional support for me. She's always allowed me to express my feelings. She's always allowed me, to, allowed me to cry. She's never told me that I need to man up and be a man. She's always allowed me to be human. And I appreciate that for my mother. You know, she still has her moments. She is a baby boomer. But overall, my mom has always given me a safe space to be myself, to tell her things, to open up to her, to be emotional. And I feel like, my mom doesn't know this, but I cherish this so much from her because I feel like my mom was so key for me developing my emotional intelligence, for me to be in two of my feelings, for me to be empathetic, for me to be understanding. And I feel like her humanizing me helped me humanize myself. So I feel like my mom was just super key and super vital to my development and my love for myself. And that brings me to my next point that I want to harp on when it comes to parenting that sometimes can either help 
or hurt our growth when it comes to our self-love. Sadly, a lot of black men are robbed from that emotional support balance when they are raised by a single parent. And unfortunately, a huge portion of single black mothers utilize their sons as an emotional scapegoat to offset the emotional connection they are not getting from grown black men. Bell Hooks quoted it best, the mama's little man dynamic often steals the childhood of little black boys. Even when fathers are present, they still tend to uphold the hyper-masculine ideals of our patriarch society and still prevent a black boy from feeling and accepting himself as human. But luckily, in some two-parent household where the mother isn't overcompensating the macho-ness and manhood for her son, she allows her son the safe space to be emotional, to be human, and to be heard. As a gay man, I've seen the impacts of self-hatred in black men twofold. My friends and family that are women are often the punching bags emotionally and physically for black men that are projecting their self-hatred onto them. Misogyny and Western patriarchy still has a chokehold on men believing that the only way to be a man is holding their power and authority over women, often influenced by the money they can earn and the materials they can buy. Black women are the victims of domestic violence and murder by the hands of black men far too often. And many black men who identify with a high value of self their ego and their desire for the adjacency of whiteness leads them to chasing after non-black women. The same narrative can be said for black gay men. You will be hard pressed to find any celebrity, any black gay men of higher status that has a black male partner. Most are so bold they will flat out say that they are not attracted to or will ever date a black person and often use these excuses like they remind them of their sibling. Overall, my goal with this video is to bring awareness to the internal battle that so many black men face, not to judge. The more we discuss, the more we can develop and heal ourselves, and that healing will transcend to the greater black community. I also believe many other men of color can relate to these dynamics as well, and I want us all to have a better love for ourselves and our community. To quote Bell Hooks, wounded black men can heal. The healing process requires that they break through denial, feel what they feel, and tell the truth. You are only as sick as your secrets. Nothing stands in the way of any black male taking the step in the direction of well-being. He simply needs to seek salvation. So guys, I really hope this video resonated with you. I hope you connected it in some way. I have definitely been on a journey to crack the self-hatred I've had for myself as a black man and to truly find love for myself and love for my community and wanting to be a voice for our community. I hope that if you are dealing with self-hatred, you can really think about the ways that you think about yourself and how you feel about yourself and just know that you're not alone and it's not something that's wrong with you. It's just something that you have to heal from. I will be offering some resources in the comments if you are a black or brown male and you want to seek resources for therapy or you want to just work on your mental health or just more resources to make sure that you have a better sense of community. At the end of the day, my goal is for us all to have a better love for ourselves, a better love for our community, and just to be better. I love black men and I want you to know that you are loved. You are okay to be who you are. You're okay to be human. You are okay to show emotion. You are okay. You are okay. And if you are gay, if you are queer, you are dealing with that battle. You are okay. Nothing is wrong with you. It is okay. So guys, with all that being said, please be sure to drop a comment. Let me know if you've dealt with the same internal battle. So hatred, have you healed through it? If you still are battling it and you want to have a conversation, you want to have a discussion, I am all open ears. I love having Having a conversation with you all. Please be sure to like this video if this resonated with you. Everything helps the algorithm. Be sure to subscribe if you are enjoying my content. And as always, guys, do your best to stay safe, stay positive, and I will see you guys on the next video.